Welcome, Village, to another episode of Jedi Learning with Baba Kintu. In today's discussion, we will look at an ancient African mathematical document entitled the Amos Papyrus. Now, the Amos Papyrus was written by who else but a scribe by the name of Amos, who existed during the 15th dynastic period. This is about 1600 before the Common Era. Now, he existed under the rule of a king or nice suit by the name of Asar Ra, also known as Apophis. He was of Canaanite background, so not a native Egyptian. And he worshiped the natural set exclusively. Now, this document was copied from an older book that existed during the 12th dynastic period, which was roughly three to 500 years earlier. This particular book existed under the rule of a king by the name of Amenemhat. Now, Amenemhat III was one of the most beloved rulers of ancient Kemet, as over 80 busts have been found bearing his name. Not only that, but there were no wars during his rule as king. And lastly, we have Henry Ryan, a Scottish collector who purchased the Amos Papyrus on the black market at the Temple of Luxor in 1858. He then turned around and sold it to the British Museum of London in 1865. Now this is our cast of characters, and let's see now what unfolds in this story. So what else is contained on this document? Well, as a matter of fact, it's three books, and these three books are divided into four sections. So once you again, you see the three and the four featured prominently in African philosophy. So you have the seven liberal arts, which is part of the wisdom system, and the fourth liberal art being arithmetic. So that's contained in this book. You also have the sixth liberal art being geometry. That's contained in this book. Now, the first section is just the introduction where Amos introduces himself, any of his Neturu affiliations, any political affiliations, and any titles he may have. After this introduction, you have these tables that are basically like times tables or anything that we would use to try to help us figure out more advanced mathematics. But these were entitled the two over n tables and the one tenth through nine tenth tables. After those two sections, you have problems one through 91, okay? And problems one through 91 are essentially these various problems that exist from arithmetic to algebra to geometry. So. In the algebra section, it's actually entitled AHA. These are the AHA problems are trying to figure out the unknown quantity. So now you see why we say AHA when we figure out something. So the geometry problems consisted of uh, problems that had to do with finding the volume of a cylinder, the volume of a pyramid, um, the hypotenuse of a three, four, five right triangle. All of this is contained as well. And then lastly, you have some miscellaneous problems. So you have the symbol of the Eye of Haru. It's also known as an Asum. The Eye of Haru is also a tool used to teach fractions. So you see how that gets broken down. Next, you have songs that help you to memorize some of these tables, very akin to the song that we've seen entitled 99 Bottles of Beer on the Wall. And lastly, you have cooking problems. They help you to figure out how many people that you can feed and what types of shapes should you use to cut things up in in order to give everybody an equal proportion. How much of any ingredients do I need to mix up this brew in order to make a certain type of beer that we like for the offerings? All of this knowledge was on this book or inside of this book and you can see why Henry was so happy when he purchased it down in Luxor. So when did this all take place? I like to start at the beginning, which will be the 12th dynastic period during the Middle Kingdom of Egypt. Now, this was a time when literature was flourishing. It was during the time also of Nima at Ra, also known as Amenemhat III. So you know, there was no wars, a peaceful time where people could use philosophy and they had time to sit down and ponder the ways and mysteries of life. So, this is where that knowledge first originated. This is where that book was first written. So we're talking about the 19th century before the Common Era. We're talking about the 1800s right in there. And once again, we're talking about the 12th dynasty. Fast forward a couple hundred years, and now 
you have the birth of Amos. So this is the second intermediate period, okay? So we're talking about the 15th dynastic period, roughly somewhere within the 1500s, which makes it the 16th century before the common era. So during this time, there is foreign rule. That's why it's an intermediate period. And that's why you have Apep or Asara sitting on the throne at this time. We know that from reading the book of Amos in which he tells you who the ruler is at that particular point in time. So we fast forward a couple of millennia and we have 1858. And this is where the document is found again in Ipet Reset, also known as the Temple of Luxor. It means the Southern Sanctuary in ancient Egyptian. So it's dug up, sold to a Scottish collector, Henry Rind, in 1858. And then he takes it and sells it to the British Museum of London in 1865. So you can see how important that 3,000 year period is in ancient African wisdom system that allowed us to pass on two of the seven liberal arts, which is arithmetic and geometry. So by now, you're asking yourself, where is all this happening? And the best answer to that is Waset Kemet. Today, we know it as Luxor and Karnak, but these are two of the greatest universities known to man. They were entitled Ipet Reset and Ipet Isut, known as the holiest of holy sanctuaries and then the southern sanctuary. This is where that book was written. This is where that book was copied. This is where that book was bought sold, dug up. Waset is known as being the capital of Upper Kemet. It has also been occasionally the capital of Upper and Lower Kemet when the two, yeah, two lands have been united. Its name means power, the land of power. The Waset, there was a symbol of power and you can see why the city was named Waset. It was the home of Amun, Mut, and Kansu, one of the most powerful triads and ancient comedic spirituality. Waset was a very, very spiritual place, a very, very powerful place, and that is where the Book of Amos still exists in heart, even if its body is in the British Museum of London. So why would he even write this book? The key lies in his intro, in which he states nothing about math, nothing about arithmetic, and absolutely nothing about geometry. What he says is this is accurate reckoning. Keys to unlocking all mysteries known and unknown. He was not trying to have you do problems so that you can get a degree, so that you can go later and get a job. He was teaching you so that you can alter your environment. He was trying to find out how to build great pyramids. He was trying to unlock how to feed the village. How do I use the right ingredients and how much of them do I need to make this mystic brew that I can ingest that takes me to another level and is also good enough to offer to the ancestors. He is giving you the keys to unlocking all mysteries known and unknown.